Hello and welcome everybody to another Incarnate live stream. My name is Mati and today we're going to be doing points of interest or how to make points of interest with the fantasy regional style. This is part two. Go ahead and check out part one if you haven't seen part two. So I'm super excited about this. We're going to let people filter in. I'm going to do some real quick announcements. I have some questions for our viewers as well as to chat with some people about some things. So Again, we're going to be doing uh, how to make points of interest. Those are little locations on your map. I made this pre-made map like we did in the first stream. And we're going to put points of interest on there. We'll review what we made in the last stream. And we'll go ahead and get started on the new points of interest. So, hey, welcome everybody. Excited to see you all. Hello, everybody. All right, so I had some quick questions about time with uh, the stream. I know there's a lot of people in here, but I was kind of thinking that maybe we would change the time that we do streams instead of 10 a.m. PST. Might consider doing it uh, maybe around 4 p.m. PST to give people a little bit more time to get off work, eat dinner, and then go make it to the stream. So if anybody who's here, feel free to let us know what you feel about that. I'll also mention this question again. Uh, probably during the end of the stream so that people can catch uh, catch that because I want to know what people think about changing uh, our time. I want to make pick a time that we stream that's going to reach the most amount of people. So let me know if around 4 p.m. PST works for everybody. Hey, thanks you Shadow. Three eminent, three eminent, our shadower, three eminent. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, we'll see. I just want to get people's uh, thoughts about this because I wanna make sure that everyone can kind of make it to the stream. Obviously not everyone, but I know that people have work, they have dinner, kids, school. So I just wanna make sure. Yeah, so I'll ask that question again late at the end of the stream to get people think first time chat. Hey, what's up Siv Vizzy, 7 p.m. there. Woo, it's late where you're at. <laughs> it's only like 10 in the morning for me. So I'm just kind of waking up slowly. <laughs> Right. So yeah, I'll just let people go ahead and, hey Nimrod, glad you're here. I'll go ahead and let uh, let people answer that question. And while that's happening, I'll go ahead and just review what we made last time here. Hey, first time chat. Hey Bart, how's it going? Glad that you are here. Okay. Uh, as you also know, we did Gen Con, super exciting. I suggest that people check that out. Our last stream was going over some of the new features and art that we'll be adding, which was a sci-fi style of black and white or battle map classic, which is very printer friendly. And of course, we have a room tool underway. So no more wall Tetris, beep, 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 because you know, that drives people crazy. Don't forget too, we also have this incarnate live uh, stream Twitch banner that pops up when we're live. So hopefully you won't miss very many streams coming up. Hey, everybody. Hey, another first time chatter. Hey, heavyweight RPG. How are you doing? Doing good. Glad to have you here. Sweet. So many people here. So glad. Hello, everybody. Hey, another first time chatter. Yay. New people and I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's it for my announcements, just the Gen Con stuff. Check out that previous video we did with some new features that are in the works and will be released hopefully soon. And then also I just wanted to run by that time. So maybe I'll be starting later in the afternoon. I don't know yet. I guess I'll just wait for further be feedback about that. I know some folks are in Europe, so it's rather late for them. For some people here in the States, it might be early still. So we'll play that by ear and see how that goes. All right. Hey, so uh, the in part one of Fantasy Regional or the uh, POIs that we made, I'll go ahead and show you what we, what we made here. So we made a kind of a Mordor-esque like uh, scene here where we had the lava and we had this kind of Mordor, like this tower and some green creepy like pits. So that was really fun. We did that with the path tool on top of those craters. We also did some desert stuff. And in the last stream, as I suggested, you should always put some kind of settlements on the outskirts of your desert because you want to make sure your players are fully stocked and ready for the long, arduous, arid trip that it's going to take to go through the desert to get inside, right? And of course, again, there's another settlement right here on the outskirts 
of course. So it's always good to put some settlements on the outskirts or the periphery of your desert or wasteland so that your players have a place to rest, heal, grab the items they need, all that stuff. So just remember that if you're working on a desert area, that you include those outskirt, those uh, villages or whatever, settlements on the outskirts, right? We also worked on a tower and a ruin in the center of the desert, as you can see here. And we kind of made it like this leaning tower of Pisa kind of thing. So super easy to do. Uh, it wasn't hard to put together, super fun. I'm just going to move this over a bit here. And of course, we added a little settlement right here as well. You see there's a staircase kind of leading up to this kind of karst settlement that I changed the, lumino the blend mode to luminosity so it would catch the same material. That's a big trick is that luminosity blend mode. So those were the things that we worked on. Uh, let me see if we did any ice settlements. We did indeed. So we also put in a, a ruin here in the uh, more arctic region here we also put in kind of a winterfell s kind of feel to it with a god tree here and we also put in a a cave caves are a major staple so go make sure you put lots of caves in and we made sure that it fit to the theme with that ice and snow and of course a tower that was covered in uh, mysterious fog so very tropey great things to add so of course lots of fun and then on this stream we're going to be adding in a couple new ones i think we're going to go with this kind of more uh, wooded area which got some trails and stuff here so when you are deciding what where you want to put your poi of course you're going to determine that the theme of the poi with the landscape that you're working with so if you're making a kind of a winter like theme of course you're going to want to make sure that the stamps suit to that theme right you notice that i had to change um these stalagmites to fit with the background you notice that i added in snow covered viking here uh, you'll also notice that, of course, I added in that Mordor-esque. So when you are thinking about what kind of POI to put down, you always want to factor in the landscape so that that way you know what the theme of the POI is. So when you're looking at your map, you look at the landscape and you say, hey, this could be a human-like settlement. This could be um, where elves live. You could even have like an orc tribe that might live in this area same thing like in this area there's a lot of trees here so maybe this would work well as like an elven establishment or an elven area so always again i just want to reiterate always check out uh the region or the the landscape that you're working with that will obviously make a lot of impact or influence on what the POI is going to be. So that's number one, right? So let's go ahead and maybe make a like a big world tree. I, you see there's this kind of empty space right here. And I think this, this space right here might work great as kind of a place where there's going to be a Yggdrasil or some kind of world tree. We could put maybe a settlement here and maybe put a world tree right here, I think, Civ, Civ. VZ had mentioned uh, a world tree, so not a bad idea to maybe fit that in. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step, of course, is when you're making a POI, make sure that you have the main central piece. And with a world tree, it's clearly going to be some kind of tree. So we'll open up that catalog. You just press that F key to open up the catalog. You press the O key to open up the object menu. You press the F key to open up that catalog, right? So I'm going to expand all because it's nice for me to go through the options. Now you can use any tree that you want to be a world tree, but I'm going to use a specific one like this one right here is really nice. It's called Big Tree 2. It even has some like mist circling around it. And I think this is kind of a good tree for that. And so there are a couple options. Now, when you're dealing with scale, there are a couple things you want to factor in. You want to look at the scale of the other POIs. Okay, so if I go in over here, I'm going to go look at this POI down here. Let's go to this POI right here. And when you're thinking about scale, you want to make sure that the scale of the POIs are about the same. Okay, now there are multiple ways to approach scale. Now, for some people, they're going to want a more realistic look. 
So of course they might make their POIs just be a little dot on the map, right? Because of course this tower, if you're gonna use to scale, look at the size of this tower, how tall it is. Look how tall these mountains are. These are clearly POIs that are exaggerated at a higher scale so that you can see the details of the POI. Now, if you're wanting to make a POI that's to scale with the landscape, you might want to consider just using an icon instead, right? Maybe a little circular icon, a dot, a star for a capital, right? So if you're wanting to stick to scale with the landscape with the POIs, go with a small icon. But if you're going with the more classic RPG maps that you see that have uh, upscaled POIs to show the detail, then this is that's what we're doing here, okay? But for those of you who prefer to work with a much more uh, realistic scale, quote unquote realistic scale, not that realistic because obviously a tree would be so small that you would just see like a carpet of green, right? So if you are working with the, the more realistic scale, Go use those little icons. If you're making an RPG map uh, that has upscaled POI so you can see the detail in the one, this is going to be more for you, okay? So I'm going to take this tree right here, and because it's a world tree, it's mostly in the fantasy trope to have the world tree be really big. It's going to be just about as tall as a mountain. It's going, it's going to be really, really big. So we're going to go back over to this area right here, and there's a couple options. We can put it right here if we want and we can scale it up if you really want to show the detail for it now some of you might look at this and say well it clashes against the landscape behind it how is it that you make a poi pop out and not clash or blend in with the background behind it well there's a really neat trick that you can use to make things pop out. I'll show you that trick. You're gonna select the stamp that you have. You're gonna to go to Object Shadow first. You're gonna go into those shadow options, select white. Okay, now you'll notice that that already causes it to pop out a little bit, right? And that's what you want. So we're gonna bring the blur down a little bit more and I'm gonna bring the offset up. Now what, you're, what you notice is that it's gonna make the top part much whiter and that's gonna cause that stamp to pop out a little bit, right? And you can see that it pops out quite a bit. So that way it's not blending in with the background and it's popping out. So that's perfect, right? We want that. The next step is decide the kind of landscape that you might expect to find uh, near a world tree. And there are a couple things that you can work with. If you want, you can add like a crater underneath it. You could add uh, some water. There's a lot of different things. Now remember that these POIs are not massive, so you don't want to add a ton of detail, just enough to show what you're going to kind of expect when you show up at that location, when your players show up, and there's a zoomed in uh, map of that location, whether it's a battle map or some kind of regional map that you're working with. So lots of different things. So let's decide how we want to do the landscape or do the texture underneath. You notice that I've added some stone here. So let's remove that stone and go with grass instead. So we'll open up that catalog. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this green texture. I think that'll work just fine. Let's just put it right on top, right here. So I have this nice kind of green texture right here underneath. So now I have that nice green texture. And I might also wanna paint in maybe some water. Maybe there's like a, not a lagoon, but maybe there is some, uh, magical pools at the base of the world tree, right? Maybe that those pools have regenerative powers because it's drawing the energy from the world tree and putting into those pools. So that's some ideas, but hey, it could be anything you want. Maybe those pools are poisonous. Who knows? Maybe the world tree is sustaining the pools. Who knows? Lots of different things. So let's say that we want to put in a water source. So I'm not going to use the subtract mode of the mask tool. Instead, I'm going to use um, a texture instead. So I'll bring that texture size way down like this. And I might even want to consider dropping the opacity just a hair. And I'm going to create these little pools Make sure it's set to the FG layer. That's the foreground layer. That's anything made with the add mode of the mask tool. And I'm just gonna go ahead like this and just paint in these kind of little pools at the base like this. So we'll paint them in, maybe even put some in behind the tree to create depth because the trick to depth is layering. If you put, you notice how the tree is 
in front of the mountains, right? Because that gives it a sense of depth. Make sure to also put some stamps in front of the world tree to create this layering depth effect. You always wanna do that, okay? Make sure that you go with lots of different layering and stacking so that you create that depth. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and just take that same texture, but go to in my advanced settings, filters. I'm gonna bring the brightness down a little bit. The way that you create depth in water is to use a darker texture. So if I darken the texture and make it a little bit darker in the center, that's gonna create the illusion of depth, okay? Now once I've done that, it might be cool to maybe uh, ring the tree and maybe even ring some of those pools with some kind of a stamp. So there are a lot of different options. I'm seeing these trees right here, so we could use those trees or use a different one. So let's just open up that catalog again real quick. Let's pick some plants. Let's take a look here. There are bushes here. There's tall grass. There's even lily pads. If you wanted to, you could put lily pads inside of it. They have to be small enough to fit in there. They are kind of big. That's okay. We'll just put a couple in there. All right, so you got some lily pads at the base there. Why don't we again ring that tree, ring the whole thing with some kind of bush or grass to kind of give it like a framing type feel. It's always nice to use some kind of stamp to frame your POI so it looks like it's enclosing it and it makes it pop out more. So be careful about what you choose. Uh, world tree, I'm kind of thinking that tall grass or bushes work. Let's just try both and just see how they look. Let's look at the size here. Let's just go ahead and create a ring around it first. So we'll put a little ring like this. Okay, now I am, you. just so you know, I am using a tablet. So that's why I'm able to make a very nice circle. For those of you who don't have tablets, that's okay because guess what? Um, you can still do it with your hand. It doesn't, it's not so bad. Let me put this in the foreground here. So I pushed this up a layer because I wanted to make sure that those bushes behind the world tree stay up behind it. You see what happened when I took it back down a layer? You'll notice those bushes are in front, right? That circular cloud ring is not in front of those bushes. So push it up a layer and then you'll notice that it's in front because remember what I said, layering is the big trick, okay? All right. All right. So there is that circular kind of feeling right there that we've encased it. Let me pop out so you can see it. You notice that those bushes create a nice frame around it. It encases it, frames it. Literally, it's framing the POI so that that way when your player, when you're looking at it, you can see that it's very much sticking out from the rest of it. So that is how you make a POI kind of pop out. You add that white uh, shadow on it. You don't have to do that. I'm just giving you one technique. So you add that white shadow and you can also frame it so it pops out. Another thing that might want to consider doing is maybe painting in a little bit of a road to it. So we could go in. Let me go ahead and select everything on this map landscape. I'm going to select that path right there. That path works just great. So let's just select that real quick. Okay, so we got a path there. Perfect. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to bring the opacity down and the size down. Let me just drag it over and just see how it looks first. Now, whenever you're working with a path, I've mentioned this before, make sure that you, of course, uh, put the path down and that way you can edit it live. So that way you can kind of see what it looks like instead of having to edit it without seeing what it looks like. It's important to put one down first. So I'll do this. So I've got that there. Perfect. I'm going to make sure it's below all these stamps. I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit more and just create a little bit of a path inside like this. Okay. A little bit and then put some here as well. There we go. And so there's a little bit of a path that goes around the edge of the bushes on the inside, right? So that way it continues on. So that main big path that you see there on the left, it connects into the smaller paths that loops obviously around the world tree. Okay, so that is as simple as it gets for a world tree POI. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. This is just one. Feel free 
to experiment, try all the different kind of things that you could come up, because world trees are varying. There can be one on a floating island. There can be one in the middle of the ocean uh, with the roots holding the landscape together. So many different options. Don't limit yourself. So be creative, try different things, have fun with it, right? Now I'm gonna quickly save the changes that I made, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in another POI. And if those of you who don't know what a POI is, point of interest. I know not everyone's into the, the acronyms, so there you go, points of interest. If there are any questions, feel free to ask our mods. Hmm, a little bit of coffee in the morning. All right, we'll save it, and then we're gonna zoom out and just take a look and see how it looks overall. This is quite a large tree. If you were to compare it against these mountains, this tree is utterly massive. Let me fit the screen here. As you can see, the POI is utterly massive, but it works in my mind. I like the way that it fits in. It's got the right region for it. As you can see, there's a lot of green here, kind of what you would expect from a world tree, but you don't have to to do that. You could have a wasteland in the world tree in the center of it with gr some greenery around it to make it look like there's a wasteland and then boom, you reach the world tree. Now the next POI that I had in mind was is that we have this negative blank space right here, this nice kind of circular shape right here. You know, it might not be a bad idea to use this space to create maybe like an elven village, maybe they're the stewards or the guardians of the world tree. So they're protecting it from people who might wanna use its power, use its magic for their own evil ends, right? So let's put and put that in there. I'll go into that catalog again. And I'm just gonna search in elf. And that way it'll just pop up right away. And you can see here are all the elven options here. So we'll go ahead and pick one. And you know, there's a lot of different things. We can make it a large settlement or a small settlement. It could be a small clan or tribe of elves that have dedicated their lives to protecting the tree, or it could be a large city in which uh, maybe a procession of elvish uh, pilgrimage, then they travel to the tree and they do a little pilgrimage around the tree. So lots and lots of different options. Uh, I'm not sure which one does best. Let's just do a small settlement for now. And again, I'm going to go to my POIs, of course, and I just want to make sure that the POIs are generally within the same scale. They don't have to be perfect. I think this looks about right. It's about that same scale as this one. Let me check here. Yeah, about right. It could probably go up a couple points larger. Let's just put it first in that negative space to see how it fits. I think that is a fairly nice fit. Yeah, it fits in real nicely there. That works for me. I'm going to keep that there. Let's do that. And I'm also going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to put that shadow. So I'm going to select object shadow like this, and I'm just going to change it up just a little bit so it has that same white shadow as this one in the back. So to make sure that it pops out, right? So that works out really well. I think that looks good. And then we'll also create a road that leads to that and I'm going to boost up the or boost up the opacity so that you can see this road leading to the world tree to the POI here. All right, so yeah, well that looks a little too much. Maybe I'll bring it down a little bit more. You're going to be doing a lot of experimenting. Let's bring it down to twenty. Uh, I think twenty will work just fine, or two. So you have that path leading up to the world tree and this one as well okay and just like before i'm going to go ahead and probably ring it with some trees i think that would look kind of nice so let's go in here just type in tree into that search field see how easy it is to navigate so simple nothing complex really easy to use let's use these uh, kind of trees right here as always i'm going to go ahead and put them up against uh, the trees that I have here to make sure that they're relatively within the same scale. That works just fine. And I'm going to put a couple along the edge right here like this. And of course, make sure that they are overlapping. So I'm going to take these trees right here. I'm going to bring them up a layer so they're in front. You see how this tree right here is in front of, they're perfect. I'm also going to boost the saturation a little bit of these trees 
So I'm going to advanced settings, filter, and I'm going to bring up the contrast. So we're going to make these bright and also a little bit brighter, I think. There we go. I want them to pop out against the darker green. So you'll notice that by themselves, when I had the tree up against this right here, you notice that they, the, the tree got lost in the texture underneath a little bit. So what I did, remember the big trick is contrast. So I boosted the brightness and the saturation of these regular deciduous trees to make sure that they would pop out against the darker grass texture that I've used below it because you want them to pop out, right? So that's gonna work out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and add more of these trees. Let's go back to the catalog here. There should be a brighter version, perfect. Let's make sure that we line this area a little bit. Let's also put some behind as well. You can see that it's there, put one here, put one here and here. And of course, I always like to do variation in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one more and I'm gonna bring the size down just a little bit just to have some smaller ones. I'll just copy and paste them. Put one there, put one there. I think that looks good. And also make sure that your path is not in front of. So you'll notice that the path is behind that tree. You don't want it to be in front of the tree. A tree is always going to overlap your path or your road, right? Let's take a step back and see how it looks. And I might even want to consider boosting the brightness of this one just a little bit. We can even change the contrast. Let's see here. Let's boost the saturation just a hair. We're just making sure that it kind of matches in with everything. And again, make sure the trees are behind. There we go. I think that looks good. Let's take a step back and just see how it looks. Yeah, I think that works. Mm -hmm. That looks right. So the main path leads to this tree right here. You've got the pools. You have another path right here, the one I have selected, that leads from the uh, this elven settlement to the tree, right? And whatever they might be, the guardians, uh, maybe it's just a settlement that lives next to the tree, lots of different options. So we have that there, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now that we finished that POI, I'll go ahead and save and go ahead and move on to the next one. I also wanna mention how to label POIs because some people get confused on what is the proper way to label your POI and that all determines on the style of the map, how busy the map is, whether or not you want to have POIs, maybe you don't want the players to have the information of each location. Instead, you figure out what the information of that location is when your players arrive there. So lots of DMs have different ways of operating their world map travel. And so let's discuss some annotation real quick. So we've got POIs, right? So how is it that I would annotate uh, these points of interest. Of course, the most simplest one that most players are going to be using is just dropping some text on there. And there's nothing wrong with that. Throwing down text is fine, but you want to make sure that that text is not getting lost in the map itself. So like if the certain text is a different color, like maybe you have it being uh, red or something, or you've got it green, obviously you want the text to pop out against right just how you notice how we made the POIs pop out you also want the text to pop out okay you and you also want a continuity uh, in the text you don't want to have 18 different colors of text because that can be confusing I don't recommend it on a world map having different color text works great on a political map but it might not work so well on a map like this right so first option no text at all that's for you DMs or GMs who don't want the players to know uh, what uh, the information is until they've arrived at that location. Okay, so just keep that bit in mind. That's the first step. If you're going to put down uh, a label, text is the first step. And I totally recommend that you use white as a text because white is going to pop out against most textures, right? It's white, it's gonna pop out. If you want further, if you want to pop out more, make sure that you add an outline around it. This nice, what dark black outline will contrast against the white, allowing it 
to pop out, okay? Now, I also recommend that when you're doing text on a map with multiple locations that you absolutely be sure that you all have the same type of text I don't or font. I don't recommend using multiple fonts unless unless um, it's you only using maybe two or three to show like factions on the map. But for me personally, I try to use the same uh, font uh, throughout the whole map. And the reason why is because then it's not confusing when you see all the various fonts. But this is totally up to you as a player, okay? All right. All right, so let's go ahead and throw in that text, and I'm just gonna put in just a rando name for now. So I'll call it Elvenar or something. All right, Elvenar or something, Elvenar. We'll go with this for now. It's an all caps, let's make it not all caps. Okay, Elvenar, all right. And when it comes to where to place the text, there are a couple options. You can put it right above it, if you wish, that's where I normally put it, or you can put it below it. And that really depends on the proximity between other POIs. So you notice that these two POIs are very close to each other. So I don't recommend putting uh, this right here because it's going to be hard to decide what this label is mentioning. Is it the look? Is it the POI below it, or is it the POI above it? Is it both? Right? You don't know. So I'm going to put this text here. And then I'm gonna put another one above the world tree right here. And we're gonna call it uh, the grandfather oak. We'll call it that for now. Now, one thing you'll notice about this is that there's some white behind this. So you notice that it's gonna blend a little bit. One thing you can do is just to increase uh, the outline a little bit more so that there's more black to contrast. So if you run into an issue where you're labeling like an Arctic area and the the white text is not popping out, it's blending in too much with that Arctic or snowy or tundra like area, not a problem. Boost the outline just a little bit, okay? All right, so you have Grandfather Oak here and you have Elvenar here, right? And of course there are other ways of labeling. I'll save all the various methods uh, for um, another stream for the annotation. So we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and also boost the uh, outline a little bit with this one, make it a little bit thicker so that way it really pops out. Perfect. Okay, so that's just a little small thing on how to operate, um, how to do your annotations. So it's about 10.32 here, we got another 30 minutes. I wanna do a couple more POIs before we end the stream. So let's go either, we can either stick in this same region or move a little bit over to here. And I see that there are quite a few negative spaces here uh, that we can use here. There's some hills right here. There's a negative space right here that would work. You notice that there's one here. There's one in this kind of crater-like location here. And there's some spots right here. Let's go do a human location because that's gonna be the most common one that you're gonna find. So maybe some kind of human settlement would do well on top of this hill. It's always important to factor in elevation when you're making a POI because it acts as a natural defense. Any invading army or invading bandits are going to have to climb up the hill to attack or siege the location. That puts them at a great disadvantage right? Because they have to go uphill. If for the people who are on top of the hill, that settlement, whatever it might be, they have the advantage. Arrows can go farther. You can see at a farther distance. Uh, you have the elevation advantage. So if you're going to put a settlement down, make sure that you put it on something that has some elevation. It's okay if you don't, but natural defenses are absolutely a factor when human beings in history have used lo proper locations to build their settlements. They're gonna factor in defenses. They're gonna factor in the availability of water and food, right? So when you're putting down a POI, make sure you have a water source. That's gonna be a lake, a river, or the ocean. That's where your food source is. Obviously, no one's gonna drink salt water, but there's always boiling. So make sure that you have water sources and food sources available. And of course, food, if you're doing crops, it's gonna be near water, right? So always remember the availability of water, natural defenses, and food, food possibilities, okay? 
Those things are always important when you're planning out where your points of interest are going to be, of course, right? So now, as you can see, this area is not too far from the ocean. It's got some negative spaces for crops. So it is a prime location. And because it's so high up, we might want to consider maybe making this a capital of some sort. So we could add in some kind of city. So if we just type in city just to see what we come up with, you've got a walled city right here. You've got this city right here. So lots of different options. Let's go to a POI. We want to do the scaling, of course. Let's just zoom in real quick and take a look. Let's go up about, ooh, let's go up about 12 and this works just fine. Let's just put it on top of the hill to make sure that it's the right scale. It does look a little big to me. So we might have to scale it down to the original size like this, or we can just do a representation. Just remember that a POI doesn't have to be the full on city, right? It can just be uh, an icon uh, or a simple town icon with just a couple buildings. So let me type in town real quick, and then we'll do that instead. Here's a human town right here. This one might even work better in my mind because it's a little bit, uh, it has less buildings, less information, and yet it's still busy enough to represent that it is a kind of a busy town, okay, or a capital. Uh, your evil toenail. I don't know actually the texture for that. I can, why don't you reach out to me uh, it, during, after the stream on our Discord and I can let you know. I just want, if you do have any questions though, I did mixed watercolor uh, cities and watercolor battle maps because those uh, low information textures worked fantastic with the fantasy regional style. So just a heads up, go ahead and mix st uh, those watercolor textures with your fantasy regional maps because they work great. I don't want to go too much off track there, okay? So there we have this uh, town right here on top of here. We can do that same trick by doing the object shadow, typing in white, of course, and bringing it up a little bit. And of course, that what that's doing is putting that white highlight uh, behind it. Of course, extremely helpful if you want it to pop out. And it works well with the paths as well. There's a continuity in color. You have these white paths or roads. You have a white outline behind the POI. It all kind of matches well together, right? Now, I also might want to consider adding in maybe a little bit more details. So one thing I might want to show that there's a food source is adding in a windmill, right? Because what does a windmill do? It is going to be grinding or processing your um, your grain, right? So let's throw down one windmill so that that way you show that there is some way, showing that there is a food source nearby. You can throw in another one if you want, copy, paste, put another one right on top of this hill if you want so that you have two of them. You can add three if you want, another one right here. Lots of different options. I don't wanna overkill it, so I'll probably just put in one or two it's just to show that there are some crops there and we can do that same thing we can add in that white outline just a quick trick if you select two select the two objects the shadows you want to change and then an object that has the shadow options that you want you'll notice that if i go to object like this make sure you select the stamp that has the shadow options you want first or last, sorry, so I selected the two windmills first, then I selected this town right here, and I just did a minor change, and you'll notice that it adds it to it, right? So it added that right to it. So it's an easy and quick way, so that way you don't have to select one at a time and then do the settings all over again. Just select the objects you want, then select the object that has the shadow options you already want, and then that way you just have to do a minor change to maybe the offset or whatever, and it will make it the same setting. So it's just kind of a quick way to uh, do that setting, all right? Now, after you've done that, there's a couple things you might wanna add in. I mentioned crops. So if I just type in crop like this, and you'll notice that the crops pop up, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'll just go with this green one here. Um, we'll put one right here maybe. 
and maybe another one right here. It makes sense to place them next to uh, the windmills because those crops are going to be processed in those windmills, right? So we'll make sure to do that. You don't need to add in a whole lot. I want to also put in a path that leads to these locations because it looks a little weird that there's no trail leading up to this town, right? So we'll go ahead and use uh, that same path that we were using before. I'm going to connect it like this, loop it, do a little bit of squiggliness, and then maybe put a little bit in here like that. Okay, so you still have that path that leads to the main route and then goes up the hill to those locations. Now, if you want, you can also do the same leading up to here and another one leading up to here, up to you, but it's just to add a little bit more detail. Now, I'm not gonna add any trees to overlap the windmills because, hey, it doesn't make any sense to have a tree in front of a windmill. That's gonna block the wind. Obviously, not a very effective windmill, right? So we won't do that. But the one thing I will do, though, is I will take those trees and maybe put them a little bit around, maybe ring them around the hill, or maybe to block some of the uh, where the town stamp meets the uh, hill. So if I take this tree and put one right here and then put another one right here, what I'm doing is kind of creating that overlapping feeling, but also hiding where uh, the tree touches the, the hill because sometimes your POIs aren't going to perfectly uh, rest on top of the hill. That's okay. Just hide where the mistakes are, okay? You don't have to resize the stamp to make it fit perfectly the top of the hill. Just hide your mistakes. Believe me, I know that sounds cheesy, but hey, it works just fine. You'll notice that now the trees cover some of the base of that town stamp, kind of hiding the irregularities or some of the goofiness that, you know, where that stamp didn't rest on the top of the hill very well. So I think that works out really well. And of course, uh, you could add in a whole lot. There's a lot of different things you could do. If you felt these are too dark, you could boost the brightness so that they match better with the lighter texture underneath. You could change the contrast a little bit if you wanted to. There's a lot of different options. You could change the blend mode to luminosity so it kind of suits better with the texture underneath. You can change the contrast, boost the brightness, lots of different things to make sure that those crops aren't too weird looking. I noticed that they were really, really dark up against uh, that light texture beneath. So this kind of helps to uh, make it look a little bit nicer in my opinion, okay? So I'll put those there. So you have some crops there. Let's also do the text. Remember that you can just copy and paste the text like this, copy, paste. I'm gonna put this on top right here. And I'll call this uh, the Village of Dingus because I have a sense of humor. All right. <laughs> the Village of Dingus. <laughs> all right, where are we sitting at time? Got 15 minutes left? I think this looks good. We're, we're doing all right. This is the village that I live at right here, the Village of Dingus. Nice place. Been there a couple times, you know, but it, it works, right? All right, so let's go ahead and save those changes. And we'll go to one more real quick POI and we'll do something unconventional instead of a uh, like a village or a world tree. Let's do like a spell scar or a bloody battlefield that took place. Something like that. Something that's not an actual like village or a location that you sit and rest at, but a place that you might have more encounters. So it could be a scar from a spell that went wrong a millennia ago. It could be where a massive battle took place and, uh, you know, maybe the blood was so thick that it never dried away completely. And so you have this blood stained um, kind of landscape. So let's go ahead and do something like that and I'll make it real quick. So right here, there's this empty location right here. And this should work, I think, fairly well to create some kind of maybe bloody battlefield that took place. So what I'll do is I'm gonna choose a stamp from a different style. And the way that I go about doing that is just search all style toggle. And so when I type in blood, multiple uh, 
the blood from different styles will pop up because there is no blood stamp in Fantasy Regional. So I'll just type in blood and all the various blood stamps are going to pop up. I'm going to use this kind of blood from Fantasy or from the watercolor battle map style. I think it works fairly well. Let's use the more splatter kind. Let's make it fairly big. I think, well, let's, let's actually scroll and rotate through and see the different ones. Ooh, I do like this one. This has got a little bit of blood on it. Looks kind of nice. Now that I've placed it down, there are a couple options. Obviously, this looks like fresh spilt blood. If this battle took place 100 years ago or 20 years ago, whatever, we want to maybe make the blood a little less uh, prominent. So there are ways to go about that. We can go through the various blend modes to see which one pops out the most. So let's just go through and play with it and see what options we have. Lots of different options. There's an overlay option, soft light. Let's go with overlay and just drop the opacity down a little bit so we can really get that. And I think it needs to be a darker color as well. So we'll bring it down a little bit there. Okay. Let's also throw in the splatter kind as well. So I'll throw in some splatter over here. There we go, we'll bring the opacity down, change it to overlay, but we had it before. There we go, and let's put another one, another splatter maybe over here. I think this works good. So the bloody battle kind of took place here. So kind of scary. And one thing we could possibly do, we're gonna put something fun together to make a very kind of interesting kind of an interesting thing. We're gonna do something a bit different. So what I'm thinking I might do is create what's called a stand a standard. And a standard or a or a kind of a heraldic kind of icon. So what I'll do is I'm gonna do a little bit of composition here. I'm gonna find a pole from the fantasy battle map style and this pole is gonna be sticking out of the ground. And it's going to have what's called like a military standard, okay? I'm going to turn off the object. And I'm not going to go, remember, this is a kind of an unrealistic, not close to scale. So it can look a little weird. So I'm going to put a pole here like this. And then I'm going to make a standard in which a banner is going to be on top of. I'm going to have that banner be kind of tattered. So I'll type in curtain like this and what's going to pop up is some tattered curtains this will work just fine and i'll probably maybe use a red one let's use this tattered curtain right here and i'm going to put it right here like this and i'm going to flip it change the rotation like this oopsie i grabbed the blood by accident i'm going to take this and rotate it to make it look like it is on resting right here like this and then i'm also going to take a path real quick and i want to create this illusion of like strings holding up this banner right here so what i'll do is i'll bring the width down i'm going to put down a path first and we're going to edit it of course bring the width down something very small change the shadow to black because we're creating a kind of a uh, a rope shall we say really thin. We're going to remove any kind of shadow. We don't need it. You'll have to remove the shadow blur and the intensity to completely remove it. And then once I've got that right, I can get the segments together and just click, press enter. There's one line going across. Click, hold. There's another one right there. Okay. And so what you have is kind of this standard. And I think what I'll do is I'll boost the saturation to make sure that, that really kind of pops out a little bit. And I think I'm gonna put a skull on top of the standard as well to show that it's kind of a place of death, right? So we'll throw on a skull here. There should be one right there, right there like that. I'm gonna turn off that object shadow and I'm gonna put the skull just right there on the top so that it kind of represents a kind of a bloody kind of battlefield. So you have this nice skull here like this. There we go. And there are a lot of options you could add. Um, there are skull and bone uh, textures if you wanted to throw that down. Uh, you could uh, also 
put down some weapons. I see there's a spear I already put right there by accident. Let me type down weapon real quick. And maybe we can put some weapons down on the ground, especially the broken ones. You'll see there's some broken weapons right here. These will work just fine. So why don't we put maybe a couple swords in the ground. We can put a sword on the ground right here. Uh, we could put a broken sword or arrow right here. We could put uh, maybe another arrow over here. We could put another sword maybe over here. So we can put lots of things on the ground to kind of represent that this is like a battlefield. So lots of different options. Let's put down one more sword and I think we're good to go. Let's take a look. There we go. So we got some nice weapons there. This is very clearly a battlefield. You've got weapons here. Yes, these weapons are huge in comparison to the buildings, but remember we're trying to represent what this point of interest is, right? What is it? It's a battlefield, right? So adding in some weapons, adding in this kind of standard there also kind of shows that, hey, this is where a battle took place. So I think that works really well. We still have 10 more minutes left, so I'll just save real quick. And I'm going to quickly go over uh, what we made here. We'll quickly do a quick little review, and then I'm going to go over uh, the rest of the schedule for the month. And I, since there's more people here, I want to pose a question. If people are interested in changing the time in which these streams take place, normally they're 10 a.m. PST, but I know that there are some people maybe on the, in the East Coast here in the United States who might prefer that I do this around 4 p.m. PST so that that way people can make it to the stream a little bit later in the afternoon. I know that's super late for those of you people who are in Europe. So that would be very, very late for you. So please go ahead and leave comments in uh, the chat about what you feel about changing the time to around 4, maybe 4 p.m. PST instead of 10 a.m. PST. So go ahead and let me know about that. Uh, if you want, you can also mention it in our Discord server, just so people can uh, debate with us about what works for me, okay? Or what works for you. <laughs> what works for me, not you. <laughs> Jesus, you greedy bastard. <laughs> okay, so our battlefield is here. I think it overall, it looks right. You've got the blood spatter. You've got some swords and some weapons here. You could throw in skulls if you want, bones, whatever you think is best. Okay, so this is very, to me, very clearly a... The battlefield. Okay, so let's just review the things that we made. We started with that world tree with the grandfather oak, right? I showed you how to make sure that your text pops out, right? Uh, I, we also made a little, a very simple POI. You know how quick it is to make a POI. It's as simple as just adding one uh, location stamp and then putting some trees around it or some foliage around it, right? It's as simple as that, not complex. It can just be as simple as one stamp, right? It doesn't have to be complex. So just one stamp is generally enough with a few icons or a few stamps around it. Don't forget to connect your roads with your location. So make sure there's a road that clearly goes from the main route or the main carriageway that goes to your POI. Otherwise, it might look weird if there's no routes connecting the locations. You know, the same thing that I did here. I added routes that went from the main carriageway or the King's Road or whatever location, it, whatever it might be, a little side road that leads up to the POI, leads up to this windmill, right? So you want to make sure that your roads connect properly, leading to the POI. There's no confusion on how your players are going to get there, okay? So make that very, very clear. Remember that your POIs are going to want to be on a defensible position. That's going to be a hill, a cliff, a mountainside, whatever. Make sure that there's availability of water, availability of food. Water, of course, is always going to be where your food is also going to be, whether it's irrigation, making canals that connect from a lake uh, to your um, to your uh, crops or 
whatever it might be. Just So just remember agriculture, irrigation, things like that. Remember to factor in crops on some of your locations. You don't have to add a lot. Just adding just one can be enough. Adding a windmill to show that, hey, there are crops here. There is a food source. It's just things to add to give your POI just a little bit more realism, okay? All right, and then the last thing we made here was this battlefield. So something a little less conventional than your village of Dingus or the world tree. A battlefield is great to tie in with an ancient battle that took place maybe a millennia ago. Anything like that, it's just to tie in your story. Remember, each POI needs to somehow tie in with the main story that you as a DM have made for your players. And the more story that actually that you have, the easier it is to make points of interest. If you're doing it the other way around, it can be a little bit more difficult. So have general ideas first within your main story or the events that are going to be taking place. And then that way it's easier to make points of interest. It is super hard to make points of interest without any kind of backstory whatsoever. So make sure that you have some story to work with. Okay. Oh, what if we got a question here. Ooh designing a society game uh, uh cool hey that's awesome oh oh i like the game carscon uh could i sell this if, uh, if i have a year thing oh, i'll let cheryl answer that question but just so you know pro does come with a commercial license so if you have pro you get it perfect cheryl already answered that question but for those of you who don't know absolutely if you subscribe if you have a pro subscription doesn't matter it if it's a, a monthly or pro uh, it comes with a commercial license, and that includes if your uh, subscription ends and you've made these maps, you can continue to sell them. It's your IP forever, okay? Super cool. Well, hey, that's it uh, for the POIs. I'm going to save this and quickly uh, go over the calendar for next, uh, what's going on the rest of the month. And I do want to make sure that you guys remember that you can go to our Discord server. Cheryl uh, provided the link for that. Of course, if you join uh, Discord, make sure that you get go to that roles channel and get that incarnator role. Otherwise, you're not going to see all the channels in our Discord. So make sure that you do that. On our Discord, there is a stream request channel. Check that out you can we listen to our users if you have suggestions for streams please share that with us because we want to make sure that we're doing streams that people are interested in so make sure that you mention that in there okay let me quickly finish saving this and we'll run back over to the catalog we're going to go out thanks for going with me on that awesome poi journey let's go check out our august stream schedule real quick i just want to mention what the future streams will be uh today is the 17th we just finished points of interest true with fantasy regional we've got how to create an underground city i'm super excited about that I know that some people have had questions like, how on earth do I make an underground city? Well, I'm going to be showing you how. I'm going to be using uh, the mask tool to make a very quick uh, underground landscape. And I'll make sure to make that clonable so that people can use that. And then we'll be putting the cities together on top of that. And I have a method that works really, really well to make quick cities. So of course, um, that's just to make the main part chunk of the city. Cities are time consuming. So let's not have any illusions about making a city in one hour, but I'll show you the methods on how to make quicker cities because believe me, they're time consuming. That's gonna be the 24th next week. And the last one on the 31st is gonna be how to create dockyards, right? Because it's always fun to make kind of a dockyard kind of scene with the fantasy battle map style so that that way because a lot of times there's going to be sea travel you're going to need to know where your players are going to port and all that stuff so that is going to really help when i mean making cities faster i don't mean making them fast i mean making them faster that simply means instead of taking 12 hours it's probably going to take closer to five or six Okay, so the objective is to cut down on time because there's no magic wand, there's no magic technique that allows you to make a map, a city map in one hour. But in that one hour stream, I can show you the tricks to make really quick city blocks, how to put down the, the road system, and then fill those blocks in real quick, of course. So in other words, how to make a generic city quickly 
But if you want to have a theme to it, like you want to have all the different um, different locations with all the different types of infrastructure and stuff, that is something you, those are details that you'll be adding to the general map, the general city that you've created, all right? So we'll be going over that and I'll be showing you how to do that. That knowledge will be applicable to all the other cities that you'll be making. So I'm excited for that. I know a lot of you will be too as well. So whew, I'm excited. Yeah, nope, Rooms is not available yet. Uh, it won't be for several months probably, but I'm super excited about it, okay? If you uh, checked out that last stream we did, I mentioned that in the stream that, no, we have not released that feature yet. But I'm excited about it, so looking forward to that. All right, well, hey, it's 11 a.m. PST. It's been one hour. The stream is over. Thank you guys so much much for joining us it's been super fun really enjoyed making those pois and i look forward to seeing you all in the next stream next week on wednesday super excited all right everybody please enjoy the rest of your week happy hump day and i will see you all again real soon keep your eyes peeled for new fun stuff please stay safe and healthy merry map making and i will see you all next week take care everyone